This video includes an example dose calculation using the PDD formalism. Let's go ahead and read the problem statement. First, we know that the Linac is calibrated to give one centigrade per modern unit at D max with a source to surface distance of 100 cm. And we're now going to calculate dose at 15 cm depth along central axis for a 20 by 20 field size and an 85 cm source to surface distance and delivering 200 modern units. And for this, we can use the PDD method, which the full equation is shown here down below. So let's start by visualizing this problem. So we are starting with our calibration condition, which is 100 cm SSD, a depth of D max, and a field size, a reference field size of 10 by 10 cm. And we want to calculate dose in a new situation, which has a new SSD, 85 cm, a new depth, 15 cm, and a new field size of 20 by 20 cm. And just to note here that the distance to the point of interest from the target is 100 cm. So this is really an SAD setup, uh, but we're going to use a PDD method to calculate this. And another thing to note is that there's a few of these factors up above that uh, we don't really need. So there's no wedge in the field, there's no tray, and there's no off-axis ratio because we're calculating dose at central axis. So we can basically get rid of those factors as we move on. We've simplified our equation by getting rid of some factors we don't need, and now we can look at the other factors that remain. And the first one I want to start with is actually the last factor here, this ISQ, or the inverse square correction. And so the inverse square accounts for the difference in the distance from the target between the dose at the calibration point, that's 100 cm SSD plus D max, and the dose at the new point, which it's going to be the new point that you start at when you do your when you from your PDD, right? So we start at D max, and then the PDD calculates dose below that at a specific depth. So for us, it's going to be um, that new kind of normalization point is going to be 85 centimeters plus D max or 86.5. So that's what inverse square correction is going to do. And so our inverse square correction is going to be 101 cm. Uh, 101.5 cm divided by 86.5 cm squared and that's basically just taking the dose difference due to the inverse square law uh, going from that point that's farther away that we started at the calibration point to our new normalization point uh, which is for a PDD method it's going to be at Dmax. And note that the inverse square is applied to Dmax rather than D since the PDD already accounts for inverse square effect moving from Dmax to D. Next we're going to look at our scatter factors and first we'll look at collimator scatter factor. Collimator scatter factor always uses the JOS field size as defined at the isocenter so it's going to be equal to 20 by 20 cm since that's the new field size. Let's look at the field size for the phantom scatter factor and the PDD. So normally when you use the PDD method the uh, the source to surface distance is unchanged. We're always looking at 100 cm, but that's not the case here. Here we have the surface moving closer to 85 cm, and so because of that, the projected field size on the surface has decreased. So we actually have to uh, account for that, and and the way we do that is just by uh, using that the proportional triangles and basically that distance of 85 versus 100 and you adjust your 20 field size down to what it is actually at the surface which would make it a 17 centimeter surface in this case. Now let's look a little closer at the PDD. So our PDD is only valid for a source to surface distance of 100 cm and so we actually have to convert the PDD that we have uh, to be valid with another uh, with, for another source to surface distance. And we do that using a factor called F, and that's this, that's this other factor that's here next to the PDD. So we can look up our PDD, but it's not really valid until we apply F for any SSD other than 100 cm. So to get F, the F factor, we basically just need to divide out the old inverse square that's, that's basically inherent in the PDD and add in the new inverse square correction. So I've broken it up here uh, 
based on the old inverse square correction being divided out and then the new inverse square correction being added in or multiplied in. And you can see that here with this f factor and we can just calculate that directly. And with that, we have all of our factors that we need. We can get our collimator scatter factor for a 20 field size, our phantom scatter factor for a 17 field size, our PDD for a 17 field size and a 15 centimeter depth. And then we have our F factor in, import, input and then our inverse square correction. And that will take us from this uh, calibration geometry on the left to our new geometry on the right. And so we can just go ahead and look up our values here that we need. So for our scatter factors, we'll just find the collimator scatter factor for a 20 field size, the phantom scatter factor for a 17 field size, and then the PDD we will find for a field size of 17 and a depth of 15. And do a little bit of an interpolation there to get our values. So here we have everything put together. So we have the uh, problem statement and then the equation that we used and then all the numbers put in. And we can do a little bit of a sanity check just to make sure that uh, we've done things correctly. For instance, we can look at our uh, scatter factors and we see that they're both greater than one, which makes sense because our field size is greater than one. Our PDD is less than one, which makes sense because we're at a depth greater than D max. Um, if we look at our F factor and multiply all that out, we find that it's slightly less than one. and then we can note that that makes sense since the new SSD is less than 100 cm. We've gotten a little bit closer to the source. So the new PDD should have a little bit more of an inverse square effect than it would at 100 SSD. So thus we would expect this F factor to adjust that PDD down a little bit. And then finally, our inverse square correction is greater than one. And this makes sense because the point, that normalization point went from 100 cm SSD plus D max to 85 cm SSD plus D max. So it got quite a bit closer, so we would expect that to uh, bump up the, the output uh, to that normalization point. And it's always a good idea to kind of do a sanity check here, because it can be really easy to maybe just get a factor or two uh, flipped upside down, or um, just to make sure that, you've, that everything makes sense and the directions magnitudes make sense.